In this video, United States Small Business Administration Administrator Isabel Guzman sends a letter to Senator Jackie Rosen, who sponsored S.4227 and S.513 bills that would mandate that the Small Business Administration disperse the full $10,000 Economic Injury Disaster Loan Grant to all legitimate small business applicants. Let's get to it. April 14th, 2021, Administrator Guzman sends the following letter to the Honorable Jackie Rosen. Thank you for your letter regarding the Virus Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program, specifically the policy limits on the loan and advance amounts implemented by the prior administration. In your letter, you urge SBA to take action to immediately eliminate the caps without the need to have Congress pass additional legislation. As you very well know, the prior administration implemented caps on dispersing the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Grant at $1,000 per employee. As you very well know, if you've been watching any of my videos from the jump, all the videos where I've been fighting tooth and nail for this thing, got it? Publicity on the New York Times, Politico, etc. We opened the line of communication with the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship with Marco Rubio's office, specifically the chairman of that committee. And we pushed to the point that they basically are operating the targeted economic injury disaster loan advance program to low income communities and to organizations who have lost a greater than a 30% loss during an eight week period that suffered a greater than 30% loss during an eight week period in 2020 when compared to 2019. So as you very well know, they placed all these caps because Congress actually gave the small business administration discretion to do so. Then other members of Congress started saying, no, that was not congressional intent. But as you very well know, the federal courts they don't buy that congressional intent argument. They simply go by the language first. And the language clearly gave the discretion to the Small Business Administration to implement these caps. The caps at $150,000 for the economic injury disaster loan and the caps at even $15,000 at one particular point in time and $500,000 because the cap was supposed to be set at $2 million. So they raised it up to $500 million. So we're making progress. Continue. Within a few days of being sworn in as a new administrator, I announced the SBA will take action to eliminate the loan caps. On April 6th, 2021, the SBA raised the loan limit for the EIDL program from six months of economic injury with a maximum loan amount of $150,000 to up to 24 months of economic injury with a maximum loan amount of $500,000. So, Small Business Administration, they sent an email announcing that they would lift the cap, that they have lifted the cap to $500,000 for the amount of economic injury disaster loan for which a legitimate small business qualifies. And legitimate small businesses will be able to qualify for up to 24 months of working capital minus cost of goods sold. Well, I didn't read the cost of goods sold, but 24 months of working capital instead of the prior six months of working capital minus cost of goods sold. I'm also proud to report the SBA will not stop at $500,000. They're working on lifting the cap to $2 million. Jose Rivera, I believe he's the Deputy Administrator for the Small Business Administration. He told the U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship that SBA Administrator Guzman instructed him to do whatever it takes in order to lift the cap to $2 million. So they're working on that. However, they haven't done so as yet. And you're going to see shortly how I put an inquiry into my contacts over at the Small Business Administration because I'm probably the first channel here on YouTube to open a line of communication directly with the press office and other officials at the Small Business Administration to get you exactly the information that you need directly from the horse's mouth. I am also, where was I at? I'm also proud to report that SBA will not stop at five. Okay, this added relief builds on SBA's previous March 12, 2021 announcement that agency will automatically extend deferment periods for all disaster loans, including the virus EIDL program until 2022 to offer more time for businesses to rebuild. So there's an extension. You don't have to pay your economic injury disaster loan, loan off 
until 2022, or you don't have to start paying it off until 2022. In your letter, you also reported that SBA eliminate the cap on the EIDL advance program, which is also implemented by the prior administration to limit advances to $1,000 per employee up to maximum $10,000. It's not a policy that I would uphold. She's not going for it. And SBA has not placed any caps on the advance program that it is currently administer administering. Right now, it is only operating the targeted EIDL advance program. Now, this is where things get interesting. The original EIDL advance program had a total appropriation of $20 billion, which was fully obligated July 11, 2020. That was last year's funding. And the program has since been closed. In total, the Small Business Administration provided 5.8 million EIDL advance, and the average advance paid was $3,400. Currently, SBA is administering the targeted EIDL advance program. I said that already, which was created by the Consolidated Appropriations Act 2021. That's HR 133, the stimulus package passed into law in December 27, 2020 and funded with an initial appropriation of $20 billion. Pay attention to that number right there. $20 billion. Okay. So she got the administration, the Small Business Administration got $20 billion in order to administer the targeted EIDL advance program that again is for businesses located in low income communities and who have suffered a greater than 30% loss within an eight week period. The American Rescue Plan acted into law on March 11, 2021, later increased the total appropriations to 30 billion with additional 5 billion for supplemental targeted advance payments for those hardest hit by the pandemic. The targeted EIDL advance program provides the full amount of $10,000 less any amount received for a previous advance. So if you received a uh, economic injury disaster loan advance in the amount of $1,000 for one employee or two, thousand dollars for two employees or whatever you got under ten thousand dollars under this program if you qualify in other words if you operate your business in a low-income community and suffered a greater than 30 percent loss during an eight-week period then you'll get the difference of what you received and ten thousand dollars so if you got two thousand dollars you receive eight thousand dollars and some organizations who meet that criteria have reported that they've received those funds however if you remember, well, a number of you should remember this, pursuant to section 332, did I pull it up? It's right here. Pursuant to section 332, this is it. Emergency AIDL grants, okay? Section 332 of the Consolidated Appropriations Act, HR 133, appropriates $40 billion. To do what? to disperse economic injury disaster loan grants pursuant to section 1110 of the CARES Act. Okay, so this basically, it modified section 110 of the CARES Act with the following modifications. If you remember, the CARES Act only gave people the right or privilege, I don't know what you wanna call it, it only wrote that Applicants may request a $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant, which you could probably do anyway. You could probably just send a letter to the government and say, listen, I want $20,000. What's stopping you from doing this? It's a free country. It never mandated the Small Business Administration had to disperse $10,000 in three days' time. It never did that. That's why anyone who requested the additional money to ensure that they received the full ten thousand dollar economic injury disaster loan grant they lost in federal court because statutory language only read that applicants may request that never read that the small business administration shall disperse those funds look how it modified it in section a1 by striking december 31st 2020 inserting december 31st 2021 in other words the Small Business Administration now had the discretion to continue to disperse economic injury disaster loan grants through December 31st, 2021, as opposed to December 31st, 2020, pursuant to the CARES Act. Approve an applicant based solely on, in subsection D, by striking paragraphs one and two and inserting the following, approve an applicant based solely on the credit score of the applicant or by using alternative appropriate methods to determine an applicant's ability to repay. Use information from the Department of Treasury to confirm that an applicant is eligible to receive such a loan or the information contained in an application and the loan is accurate by striking during the covered period and inserting the following advances during the covered period. 
as so designated by striking within three days of the administrator sees an application from such applicant and by adding at the end of the following timing with respect to each respect respect to each request that's submitted to the administrator in the sub subparagraph a hold on I'll get to the point. The administrator shall not later than 21 days after the date on which the administrator receives the request verify whether the entity is an entity that is eligible for a loan made under 7B2. So it struck within three days time, which didn't really mandate the Small Business Administration to do anything. But this time they have 21 days in order to first verify that indeed the applicant is a business that's eligible to apply for the economic injury disaster loan grant or receive an economic injury disaster loan grant verify whether the entity is the entity that is eligible for a loan if the administrator under clause verifies the entity submitting the request an entity that is eligible as described with respect to an entity that the administrator determines is not entitled to receive an advance under the subsection provide the entity with a notification explaining why the administrator reached that determination so if for some reason you as a small business owner do not qualify to receive the $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grant then within 21 days time the small business administration has to tell you why or in par or they have to go ahead and disperse those $10,000 economic injury disaster loan grants now here's the key part right here in paragraph 7 by striking 20 billion dollars inserting 40 billion dollars in paragraph 8 by striking december 31st and inserting december 31st 2021 so the cares act appropriated 20 billion dollars towards the disbursement of economic injury disaster loan grants and as ms guzman wrote the original eidl advanced program had a total appropriation of 20 billion dollars which was fully obligated by july 11th 2020 then congress went ahead and appropriated more funding for more disbursement of the economic injury disaster loan grant as you can clearly see here section 332 that number has increased to 40 billion dollars so where are those other 20 billion dollars now you may say oh that's the money they're using for targeted eidl advance take a look at section one 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 uh three three one excuse me take a look right here this is the targeted EID advance, right? Is everything has to do. I won't read the whole thing again. I won't put you through that torture. Anyway, so just give you a quick rundown. Covered entity applies for a loan under Section 7B2. So if you apply for a loan, you're a covered entity under the targeted EID advance program. This is the one for low-income communities. Located low-income community has suffered an economic loss of greater than 30%. Employees not more than 300 employees. Yada, yada, yada. You know the rest. They are administering that program. They're currently dispersing economic injury disaster loan grants under that program. Take a look. This is still section 331. I hopeful, hopefully I don't miss it. Okay, authorization of appropriations. There are authorized to be appropriated to the administrator $20 billion to carry out this section, which shall remain available through December 31st, 2021. Right here, let me highlight it real quick. Let me just zoom in real quick if I if you allow me to Microsoft brave browser I don't want it to pause too much during the zoning anyway you know you know right here Guzman administrator Guzman basically confirms that right here funded with an initial appropriation of 20 billion dollars and According to the American Rescue Plan, signed into law on March 11, 2021, later increased appropriations to 30. So, the administration got $30 billion to execute Section 331, the targeted the ideal. So, where's the 20 billion? The other 20 billion for Section 332. I don't see anybody addressing that. That's something that I want you to go and visit. U.S. Senate Committee on Small Business and Entrepreneurship, sbc.senate.gov. You can go ahead and contact them and give your feedback in regards to how the administration is executing this program, the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program. Targeted EIDL, that's working. A number of people are stating that they're getting their revenue. They're getting their money, excuse me. However, Section 332, I don't see anything to that respect. If you remember... If you've been watching my videos, I went ahead and sent emails to the press office so, back in on my last email 
February. Actually, it was January 20th I sent the first email. And then it took me some time to go ahead and upload the video where I told you about it. It's executing Section 331. So basically, so that's me on February 3rd, 2021, reading the email that I received. So I got an email coming from the Small Business Administration. And they were bragging on how well they've been distributing and executing the new Paycheck Protection Program. All right, more than 60,000 PP loans approved in the first week. PPP loan open to all lenders, shuttered venue operators grant, targeted EIDL advanced grant program in full effect. So I went ahead and dropped them an email and I asked them about section 332. It's clear that the SBA's targeted EIDL advanced guidance is executing section 331 of HR 133 page 862. I even gave them the page, it was easy for them to find. Congress appropriated $20 billion to fund this section. Thank you for taking part in this effort in saving our country's economy. Since they got additional 30. Okay, cool. However, pursuant to section 332 on page 864, the SBA must disperse grants in the amount that an eligible applicant requests up to $10,000 without the criteria listed in section 331. Congress appropriated $40 billion or $20 billion more to fund this program. submitted if the administrator under clause verifies the entity submitting the request, an entity that is eligible. Again, I read all this stuff as described. Provide the advance requested by the entity pursuant to the CARES Act up to $10,000. Dollars. So I asked Miss Carol Wilkerson and the press team over in the Small Business Administration. They've been doing a great job, by the way, communicating everything that they can. And the Small Business Administration workforce, they have worked nonstop to ensure they try to do the best they can with the tools that they have at their disposal. You have to remember, a lot of the problems came from the top, came from Congress, came from the prior administration. So what happens in the following scenario? So I gave her a scenario about a business not located in a low-income community. In other words, a business or small business owner that applies, that does not qualify for the targeted EIDL advance program. A small business owner with one employee applies for an EIDL and received a $1,000 grant under 2020, $1,000 per employee SBA rule. This applicant does not operate her business in a low-income community, does not satisfy the criteria to benefit from S331, okay? The applicant therefore only received $1,000 per employee, but pursuant to Section 332, the SBA must pay out a full $10,000. How can a business owner in the aforementioned situation, in other words, most of us, us excuse me, <laughs> most of us, how can a business owner in the aforementioned situation request a full $10,000 grant or the balance of the $10,000, $9,000 that she'd not receive? Will such an applicant have to file an application for another EIDL with the option to request a $10,000 grant? If so, when will that application portal open? Or does the SBA interpret the law differently? Or do, are they seeing things in a different light? Perhaps they think they can't execute, or perhaps their legal team is still looking over this thing and determining, listen, how can we drag our feet based on the statutory language? How can we get out of this this time and probably hold that money for I don't know what? Okay, thank you for your responses. Okay, those are our community's inquiries. That's what you guys wanna know. When will I get my $10,000 EIDL grant advance, although I'm not located in a low income community? And I'm not either, used to be, Hi, Carol. I had a great week. Any word on the EIDL Advanced Program? So I followed up with Ms. Carol Wilkerson and Andrea Roper, another official over at the press office. First, on February 2nd, they actually got back to me, and I told you about that in the video. Neil, thanks for your email. We'll, we will be in touch. So I got them thinking. So they didn't say that they interpreted the law differently or anything. However, April 16th, today, the filming of this video. Hi, Carol and Andrea, I hope you had a great week. Any word on the EIDL Advanced Program pursuant to the modification of the CARES Act included in Section 332 of HR 133. Thank you so much for your help. And I got a uh, auto response coming from Ms. Wilkerson directing me to seek out a response from Ms. Cecilia Taylor. She's also an official over at the SBA press office. And I basically follow up with her. Any word on when the SBA will execute the EIDL advance program soon to the modification of the CARES Act included in the section 332 of HR 133. And I have yet to receive a response, but I'm sure they'll get back to me shortly. And you'll be the first to know. Only click the subscribe button, click the bell notification, and go ahead and click the video that you see on the screen right now. 
So you could watch the video where I discuss on how I inquired about this. And now I actually just sent another email to the Small Business Administration press office inquiring as to when the federal agency will lift the cap on EIDLs to $2 million.